Hey guys, I don't normally make videos like this, so this is going to be a little bit different from usual, but I, I thought this was such a big deal that I really wanted to just discuss it with you guys in a video. So we just got a TWAB or a Dev Insight into the future plans for balance changes in the final shape, is my understanding of what it is. And some of these changes are actually really big, and I think a few of them are kind of really stupid. So we're going to go ahead and have a look at, at what they are and sort of talk about what they actually mean for the meta. So getting starting with this, the first thing that we have is a change to weapons and mods. So basically this line here is saying that they're going to be removing these mods. And I actually really like this change. This is really cool. So they're basically just upping the base damage of weapons in the game and then removing these boss spec and minor spec and all these mods, which is great because we'll actually get to, you know, pick different mods for what we want to improve like handling or, or any other thing we want to deal with. So I think this is actually really interesting. And I think that this actually is a huge buff to a death weapons where you have stat increasing mods. So the next thing we have here, basically they nerfed exotic primaries. So instead of being 40% better than legendaries, they're only 30%. I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, they're nerfing primaries. But honestly, exotic primaries were so much better than legendaries that it almost gave no reason to use them. So I think this is a move at least in the right direction. And then we have a bunch of different changes to damage for weapon archetypes. They buff pulse rifles quite a bit. I think it's really funny that they're actually increasing pellet shotguns by more than slug shotguns because pellet shotguns are already better than slug shotguns. So I don't really know why that. I mean, it's only a 1% difference. It's not that big of a deal, but definitely great. I think it's kind of funny they're buffing shotguns more than other weapon types for special DPS weapons since shotguns are already the best special DPS weapon. A little bit odd, but, you know, it's a pretty minor difference regardless. Otherwise, we basically just got some primary ammo buffs as well as trace rifles. So trace rifles would do a good bit more damage, which I actually kind of like. You know, trace rifles are, they kind of fell off after the uh, double special nerf, really. And uh, they're still good for their utility, but they really just couldn't kill anything. So I'm kind of happy to see this. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll be able to actually kill some enemies now. So they also reduced the damage of the splash from Sunshot, Trinity Ghoul, Polaris Lance, and Graviton Lance. And aside from Polaris Lance, these were pretty much the three good primary weapons in the game. So uh, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't like that they're nerfing primaries because, you know, they're already not that good overall. But these were pretty much the best primaries. And since they're nerfing a lot of other things, I think in the big picture, this actually does make sense. So this is something I actually really like. Basically, in this, they're talking about the damage buff that kinetic element weapons have over the uh, weapons that have an element. This includes other weapons in the kinetic slot, like strand and stasis, where basically kinetic weapons just did more damage. So they've taken away that damage, which is basically a nerf to kinetic weapons, which is, you know, unfortunate for some stuff like uh, Mountaintop and, and uh, Izanagi's Burden. But ultimately, this is great because it's going to allow weapons that aren't kinetic to compete as DPS weapons. So again, in the big picture, I think this is a good thing. And let's not forget that they increase the base damage of most special weapons anyway. So this is uh, going to be a little less noticeable than the full 15% damage. Uh, they're changing the name of a couple of weapon frames. I don't really care about that, but I guess they're making, making them more universal, which is pretty cool. You can read that if you really care. It uh, looks like they're going to be increasing the stats on the new, uh, or the, the reissued uh, aggressive hand cannons, because, you know, uh, his hammer is a little better than them. So they're up in the stats. That's pretty cool. Not really much in PvE. Uh, in PvE, though, we have low inventory stat snipers getting more ammo. I honestly didn't know there were any snipers in the game that only got 14 shots. So, I mean, definitely great to raise that. But uh, it looks like all the snipers that already get, like, 20 in, in the reserves aren't going to be changing. So... Probably not going to have an effect on the meta, really. But definitely cool to see some weaker weapons get a little better. So this is where things get really interesting. They're changing waveframe grenade launchers a little bit. So the first thing they're doing is they're making the blast radius stat actually do something. So this right here is a pretty important line. Basically, they're setting the base blast radius to be 50, which is what we've had for years and years ever since they came out. That's what it is now. If you go above 50, then you will actually have a larger wave than we've had in the past. So this is technically a buff, but it could be a nerf if you have uh, things that reduce your blast radius on grenade launcher. So make sure you check out what your blast radius is. It's actually a relevant, a relevant stat now. As for special ammos, they have reduced the length of the waves. So basically, instead of going 22 meters away, which is, you know, insane, uh, they're only going to go 15 meters out. Wave frames are still going to be the best egg there in the game, but, you know, they're going to be a little more reasonable now. And in the big picture, it looks like they're kind of just making the entire meta weaker. 
which I don't really hate. Uh, next up is some things they did with swords. So they made a little quality of life thing with the reticle where you can see when the delay is going to end before you start recharging your uh, your sword energy, which is pretty nice. And then they fixed some glitches with uh, with swords. So now you'll have a little bit more ammo efficiency if you're using adaptive swords. Wrong. Kind of weird. Uh, anyway, here's where we get into the really funny stuff that I think is mostly just absolutely stupid. So the the exotics changes. There's changing specific exotics. So first of all, they are nerfing divinity. Divinity is awful. You use it in like two encounters. I don't know. I don't know what individual at Bungie thought that nerfing divinity was needed, but it wasn't. The gun is awful. It's one of the worst weapons in the game you could use at this point. It's got like two use cases. And I mean, in those use cases, to be fair, it's completely unreplaceable, but I don't really see why they're doing this. And remember, making it take 75% more shots to generate the cage is so much. Like, that's almost doubling the amount of ammo and time it takes to create the cage, which is just so stupid. I definitely don't understand this buff or this nerf. I also don't really care because nobody uses Divinity anyway. It also looks like they're changing Rat King to be a little easier to shoot, which is kind of fun. That's, you know, that's not bad. A Devil's Ruin, I guess, had some glitch where you could apply the funny animation to other sidearms. So, I mean, that's fixed. Nobody cares. Symmetry is getting some better stats. Nobody asked. Uh, this part I read, it was kind of funny. So, Gallahorn is getting the uh, a change to its visual effects. As far as I know, there's no balance change to it, though. Somehow, it's still going to be the best weapon in the game. Uh, but basically, instead of there being like a blue trail behind the, uh, the wolf pack rounds, they'll match the, the element of the rocket launcher. What I thought was funny is they said on the Royal Entry Void Rocket Launcher buffed by Gallahorn, they will have Void effects. So apparently the only Void Launcher that will get the, uh, the Void effects are, is, is going to be Royal Entry. Uh, clearly this was meant to be a, a example of a Void Launcher, and they just wrote it wrong. So that's kind of funny. Uh, it looks like they buffed Touch of Malice for PvE by making the burn last longer. Nobody cares. This is kind of funny to me. They are nerfing Osteostriga again. You know, nobody was using it. They nerfed it a while ago. Nobody continued to use it, and they're just nerfing it again. I don't really know why, but, you know, here we are. Uh, they are buffing Necrochasm, although I don't think this is really going to make it that good still. I mean, waveframes exist, and Sunshot's still probably better. But, you know, maybe I'm totally wrong about that, and this will make it super good. It is kind of nice that it's getting a damage perk with uh, one for Thrall. If that's the 35% damage buff, like one for all, then, you know, that could be pretty good. But we'll have to see, really, because we don't have any numbers here. And this one, this one seemed kind of dumb to me as well. So they're, they're nerfing Lament. And here's what I really don't understand about this. So Lament's upsides are that it has slightly above average damage compared to other swords. You know, it's better than swords that aren't surrounded, but it's worse than swords that are surrounded. And it also has the healing, which is pretty minor, and most of the time it doesn't save you on its own, but, you know, it's kind of nice. So, to fix this being pretty much the best sword, which it, it kind of is, uh, they have reduced the healing effect, which, you know, makes sense, because they're basically saying, you know, the healing makes it just way better than any other sword. So they reduce the healing, but on top of this, they've decided to nerf its damage also. So now it has bad healing, and does less damage than legendary swords. So. I don't really understand why they do both of these. I mean, I would understand doing one or the other, so it had, like, good healing but bad damage, or it had good damage but bad healing. But why are they applying both nerfs? That really doesn't make sense to me. So I guess in the future, we're just going to be using uh, Whirlwind Blade Swords on Crota if you don't want to set up Surrounded. Otherwise, obviously, you could just set up Surrounded, and that's still going to be the best damage. Yeah. So definitely a, a dumb nerf here in my eyes, but, you know, let me know you guys' thoughts in the comments below. The Dead Man's Tell change is a little bit goofy to me. Uh, basically, they want to make it the hip-firing, you know, god gun, which is pretty cool. So I guess they bumped up the rate of fire, which is kind of nice, especially on a slow-firing weapon. And they're giving it more stability, which is... Nobody cares. Uh, and they also acknowledge that hip-fire in general is better on mouse and keyboard than it is on controller. So apparently they just completely overhauled how the hip-fire works on controller, and they're just going to casually include that in here on the... DMT part, and they're going to increase the baseline rate of fire to be a 140 instead of a 130, so that's that's pretty fun. Uh, it's basically just going up an archetype, and I don't think its damage is going down from that, so 
Uh, it might be pretty good in PvP. Uh, we have the colony change, which I think is actually kind of cool. So basically, when you kill something with the colony, it spawns more colony shots, is my understanding of this. And apparently it could spawn up to five if you take out, like, a boss. So that, that's kind of cool. So you might have an infinite uh, ag clearing weapon here by just, like, shooting something that one-shots an ad, and it spawns another one that one-shots another ad, and it could just slowly clear out a room on its own, uh, which is kind of interesting for, uh, you know, being able to do other stuff while the ads just get cleared on their own by colony. Uh, but of course, with this being a heavy weapon, and you're kind of, you know, giving up on a DPS weapon, which is most of the time what you want in your heavy slot. So I feel like this is going to be something that could be good, but is a heavy weapon. The truth changes, I actually think, are kind of interesting. So they're increasing the damage of uh, the explosion because it doesn't have impact. So apparently this is going to be less noticeable than a rocket with impact damage. So I guess they're buffing the damage. And they're increasing the reserves by an additional 3. And remember, this already had a base reserve of 11 by being considered a high impact frame in the ammo buff it got earlier. So we're now up to 14 rockets without any reserve mods and 17 or 18 with reserve mods. So that is quite a lot of ammo and I believe that this is going to do more damage than a bipod rocket. Unfortunately, because it can't have Gallahorn, that's really the only thing holding it back. If they update Truth to let it get Gallahorn effects, this would actually be like a genuinely good rocket launcher. So I really hope they do that because that's really all Truth needs to be a meta option. We've got a Bastion buff or change, which is pretty cool actually. So they're basically making it a little bit more unique than just being a fusion rifle that does damage in the medic slot, I guess. You know, it's not really that interesting right now. So as long as the base damage isn't nerfed, then this is just directly above. Uh, but basically, if you punch something first, you get more damage in charge rate, and I guess reload speed, and landing most of the pellets gives you increased melee damage. So that might be a one-two punch alternative, although obviously one-two punch shotguns are instant, so they're still going to be better for that purpose. But, you know, it's kind of nice as a little add-on to also doing damage with the fusion rifle. That's kind of cool. Uh, next up, we've got Ariana's Bow. Uh, they're doing a buff to it, which would be good if they were actually buffing it, but this buff is just almost nothing. So piercing a champion's shield will cause them to ignite, which is a little bit of extra damage, I guess, but not really anything that special. And the last and most laughable, Terministic Chaos, my favorite, is going to be changed a little bit. So the weapon is now intrinsically anti-barrier. And we all know that making a terrible weapon intrinsically anti-barrier, or have any other sort of effect to champions, makes it super good, right guys? However, just to add to it even more, they've decided to make it even harder to apply the weaken. The only thing that was remotely redeemable about this weapon it's now four times harder to weaken targets. So that's really cool. And that actually wasn't last. There was also the uh, change to fundamentals, the thing that lets you change elemental types. So finally, after like however many years it's been, the fundamentals doesn't clear when you die now. So that's pretty nice. Otherwise, we've got some changes to some legendary perks. Uh, Alacrity won't work in Rumble anymore, which is definitely a good thing. Uh, Archer's Gambit is getting slightly nerfed. This is probably so that they can add it to future legendary bows. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Grave Robber, actually an insane change here. It's going to apply on melee hits. So you don't have to get killed. This is actually really good because, you know, a lot of the time when you're doing melee damage or melee builds, you're not getting a kill with the melee. You're doing damage with the melee, right? So this is really good for Trench Barrel, but it's also really good for 1-2 Punch Shotguns. Just definitely, you know, going to be a already was a pretty good perk on shotguns, now is going to be an S tier top notch choice. Uh, we've got the chain reaction nerf, it looks like they are finally going to be showing off what that is, basically 15% smaller AoE and 20% less damage, which might actually have an effect on chain reaction on special weapons, although on heavies it's actually getting buffed, which is pretty cool, and I mean 30% damage is quite a big buff, so we'll have to see how that plays out. Uh, eddy current is being changed, to be less worthless. Unfortunately, it is still a reload perk for sprinting, so nobody cares. Underdog is just being replaced with Pulse Monitor, uh, which is good because Pulse Monitor is just kind of a better version of Underdog in every single way. Now this might be the most exciting change in my eyes, and this is Osmosis and Permeability. So I don't know why, but they split this up into two different segments where they talk about the changes to these perks. 
So we're going to, at the end, actually see the other half of the changes here, but just bear this in mind once we finish. So osmosis and permeability will no longer drop off when pulling out a ghost or similar actions, which is you know really nice because it was really annoying that you could just constantly accidentally lose your uh, different element. Normally you don't want the base element if you're using one of these perks, that's the entire reason you're using it. So it was really annoying to have it revert back to the base, base type. And now it partially refills your weapon's magazine on activation. So with permeability, when you pop your class ability, you are getting a reload on anybody. This is actually really cool for Titan as one of the few ways you can get instant reloads on Titan. Uh, you could use the thruster and have, you know, basically 100 dodge, I guess, which is kind of nice. Titans are really struggling for that. Uh, and then Osmosis basically is going to be like Bad Demolitionist now, but it has obviously the benefit of changing your weapon's element. So really interesting point there. Uh, moving on, we've got a Chill Clip rework. Basically, they are doing what they should have done when they initially nerfed Chill Clip, and the nerf is now only applying to Riptide. So other slower firing weapons only require two shots to freeze again, including the grenade launcher. Uh, next up is a buff to high ground. So it is getting 5% more damage and it is uh, getting to be like bad rampage, except you can get the full buff by just standing over the enemy. So, I mean, it's got some use now, but still not really amazing. Uh, we've got a killing tally change on delirium. Apparently 21% to delirium had some different version of killing tally and it's now like any other weapon. Uh, I didn't actually look into this, but uh, you know, apparently that was a thing with some weapons, so they're removing it on 21 Delirium. And back to Osmosis and Permeability, here we go. So Osmosis and Tessellation now match the damage type of your equipped grenade. Tessellation already did this, or well, it was based on your subclass, but now it's based on your grenade. This is a, obviously a change for Prismatic. Uh, osmosis will work the same way. It's based on your grenade, which is actually really cool because you can just kind of make your grenade whatever you want on Prismatic. So that is really nice. So now permeability and elemental capacitor are basically going to work based off of your super. However, other things like osmosis and tessellation will work off your grenade. Uh, and this is probably the most tragic thing. Uh, deconstruct has been nerfed into the ground. You know, there was a perk that dared to compete with bait and switch. And, you know, despite just recently nerfing it, Bungie can't have that. So they have just absolutely ruined the perk no longer makes ammo from thin air it pulls it from reserves so yeah deconstruct is now worthless and my video about edge transit no longer matters so that is very unfortunate i know you guys were having fun using perks that aren't bait and switch but you can go ahead and go back to only using bait and switch enjoy